Hello, Shares Lovers, Suren here, and in this video, I want to share with you an interesting historical game played in 1959 at Bled Zagreb Belgrad Candidates Tournament. With the white piece, is playing Estonian chess grandmaster Paul Keres, and his opponent is American chess grandmaster Robert James Fisher. At the time of this game, Fisher was only 16 years old, and I have to tell you that this game is treasured in his book My 60 Memorable Games. This game was played in round 1 and Keres opened up with e4. Fischer responded with Sicilian defense c5, knight f3, d6, d4, c takes d4, knight takes d4, knight f6, knight c3 and a6. Fischer goes for knight or variation and Keres proceeds with the main line, bishop g5, e6, f4, bishop e7, queen f3, queen c7, white castles queenside, Knight d7. In here, the most popular move is g4, a move which Gligorich and Smyslov would choose against Fischer during this tournament, but in our game we have bishop e2, b5 by Fischer. Here we have bishop takes f6, knight takes f6, and e5. We have a double attack, the knight and the rook are hanging. Bishop b7 is virtually forced, and before this, usually white was moving away his queen on g3 square. But after bishop b7, Paul Keras delivered a surprise, and instead of touching his queen, he went for a queen sacrifice. Yes, guys, believe it or not, but he captured on f6. It turns out that this was a well-developed line by Paul Keras, and with the home preparation, he wants to take Fisher by surprise. Fisher accepted the queen sacrifice and captured on f3. Bishop takes f3 and bishop takes f6. This is the most accurate defense, because otherwise if you move like rook c8, if you move away your rook, then after f takes e7, you can't even capture on e7 because of this knight f5 move. And if you move like e takes f5, then rook e1 is coming. This is a total destruction, guys. That's why after bishop takes f3, we have bishop takes f6. Fisher is allowing white to capture on a8, after which is playing d5, and is like imprisoning this light square the bishop, the threat he's castling king's side in order to come after this bishop. In here, Keras played bishop takes d5. I guess he was still in his preparations, but he could have also go for bishop c6 check, though it's not quite clear how is white going to solve the activation of this bishop. But in our game, after d5, we have this interesting looking bishop takes d5 move. Here is the idea, if you accept the bishop sacrifice, then after knight takes d5, you can face serious problems. If queen c8, then rook e1 check is coming, and then knight takes b5. You can't even capture on b5 because of this knight b6 move. There is a back rank weakness, and this is a total destruction, guys. There is no safe square for this queen. Or after bishop takes d5, if queen f4 check, then king b1. You can't even win a piece because of this bishop c6 check, and then knight e2. That's why after bishop takes d5, Fischer actually found the best defense and captured on d4. Now comes rook takes d4. And only now he accepted the bishop sacrifice, he takes d5. Knight takes d5, queen c5 check, rook e1 check, king f8 and c3. Let's take a look at the position. In return for his queen, white has a rook, a knight and a pawn with all his pieces developed. In addition, black's king is in some danger and his rook is undeveloped. If black can solve the activation of this rook, then white can face serious problems. That's why, in this position, as all black needs is to activate this rook, Fischer goes for h5. He's opening up a luft for his rook to bring it into the game. Fischer calls this a hard move to find. f5 by Keres, rook h6 and f6. White is going for a pawn sacrifice in order to keep black bottled up, but this is a dubious move, guys, and in the return white is getting no compensation. Instead, it was better to play a move like rook d1, but in our game we have f6 and Fischer simply munched it. g takes f6 is on the board, knight f4, h4 and rook d8 check. Well, Kara still keeps on attacking, but already it was high time to think about defense and a move like rook e2 could have been better. 
in order to solidify the position but in our game we have rook d8 check king g7 rook e8 queen g1 check king d2 queen f2 check knight e2 rook g6 g3 well rook g8 check is better though again this won't give white anything black has a huge advantage let's go back in our game after rook g6 we have g3 and f5 black is opening up this f6 square for this king rook g8 check king f6 and rook takes g6 check well if move like rook d6 check then simply king e7 and again white can't do anything but like he's winning Let's go back. In our game we have rook takes g6 check and f takes g6. g takes h4 and a mistake by Fischer. Queen takes h2. It was better first to win the pawn on h4 and only then come after this pawn on h2. Because now after queen takes h2, white is managing to save his pawn on h4 and is prolonging his resistance. Queen h1, the threat is queen b1, that's why we have king c2, king e5 and a4. White was looking for a counter play on the queen side but it turns out that those moves with the pawns are only weakening white's position. Knight c1 could have been better with the idea of knight d3 but in our game we have a4, queen f1 and finally knight c1 is on the board. Queen g2 check, king b3 another mistake by Keres, king d1 is better gives white better defensive chances but in our game we have king b3 and the king is now like out of the game b takes a4 check king a3 yes you can't even capture on a4 with your king because of this queen c2 check if knight b3 then queen takes b2 or after b takes a4 check if rook takes a4 then queen d2 anyways is coming and then f4 your pieces are out of the game while this f pawn is unstoppable let's go back in our game we have king a3 and queen c2 knight d3 check king f6 right now there is a mating threat that's why knight c5 was played queen c1 rook takes a4 queen e3 in here the game was adjourned and the sealed move was knight takes a6 the official was expecting a move like Rook d4, but according to the engine, rook takes a6 check is the best move. But anyways, all moves are losing, you know, already white's position is lost. Rook d4, we have king f5, knight b4, queen e7, a powerful move. White is temporarily pinning the knight and at the same time is attacking this pawn on h4. King b3 and finally the pawn on h4 also drops. And the rest is easy guys, you know, black is faster, black pawns are reaching the first rank faster, f2, white is forced to give away his knight, white's position is totally lost, and moreover I have to tell you that already at this point Paul Keras was in a serious time trouble, the pawn on b2 also drops, king c5, a desperate attempt by white, king d5, well if rook c4 then queen a5 check is coming and then queen c7, that's why we have king d5, but even this can't help white. g4 is on the board. Rook c4, a terrible blunder which steps into a checkmate. Yes, Bobby Fischer even managed to checkmate Paul Keras in the end of the game. Very, very nice and dramatic game by Bobby Fischer. 16-year-old chess prodigy managed to refute Paul Keras' analysis over the board and won the game. What an unlucky start for Paul for Paul Keras, let's not forget that this game was played in round one. Paul Keras lost, but in the end, he even managed to end up in the second place. Well, hope that you enjoyed this game, and in the end, let's also solve a chess puzzle. Please take a look at this position and try to find the winning move for white. I will wait for your answer in the comment section. Thanks for watching, here are more suggestions for you, feel free to check them out as well, I will see you in my next video.